If you're an artist and you think that you're, you, you playing your, all of your new album is more important than the, than the crowd um, walking out feeling satisfied, then be it on your head. Hi, I'm Nick and I'm joined by John Taylor and Simon Lebon for the latest in Enemies in Conversation series. How's it going today? So far, so Not good. bad. How are you? I'm good, thank you. You're feeling fresh. Um, I'm feeling fresh. I spent, I spent a lot of time in cold water this morning, <clears throat> which makes me feel very relaxed for the rest of the day. What's the benefits of it? Is it meant to, is it kind of meant to kind of boost your circulation and stuff? Um, that's yes. <laughs> tightens, tightens certain parts of you right up. Um, Ready for action. I, I don't know. It's it's it's. I, we, funny enough, cold water is something my mum used to do. I remember. Well, I remember waking up and here, we, the, me and my brother would run into the bathroom because all we, we could hear is oh oh oh, and it'd be my mum sitting there <laughs> splashing, kneeling in the bath with the cold tap running, splashing herself with cold water. So is that something you'll do if you're doing a show that night? Is that part of the kind of pre-show ritual? I always, I, I do, not really. No, there's, <clears throat> there, I mean, I could say yes, but I'd be lying. <laughs> no, do you want to know about pre-show rituals? Yes. So, I mean, the whole day is really a ritual for, for, for a show, isn't is it? Is that all? You know? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> the whole day. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, you're just, it, it, you're always getting in tune. You know, and it, and as you get closer to the show, then yes, it, it starts getting more and more. Yeah. You know, but yes, the day definitely is, uh, you know, from the moment you wake up, you're thinking about what mm -hmm. have you got to do to get into that place where, from the from the beginning, really, just the idea of learning to peak at nine o'clock in the evening, mm. you know, was an int was interesting. Or even later when you start, you know, when you're playing clubs, you know, and you, you, you know, it's not like, I don't know, I've never been the kind of guy that could stay in bed until lunchtime. You know, I tend to get up, I like mornings, yeah. but then you've got to sort of, Me too. you've got to hold on to that energy so that, you know, nine, nine o'clock, 10 o'clock, you're really hitting it. But there's, there's a certain kind of on the runway feeling, isn't there? When you go into the dressing room, <clears throat> you start, you, you know, you, you put your, your, your gear on and you put a little bit of makeup on. And, and then that, that's when I feel the nerves kind of slipping yeah. in there, and sort of the, the, um, the tingling and, the, and the, what could be awful but I have a mantra. I have a, I have a ma no, it's like a litany against nerves. And this is it. <clears throat> it's not fear, it's adrenaline. It's just your mind and your body preparing you to do something extraordinary. Mm. And you will do something extraordinary. Have the nerves kind of... Has it's it an got, actor thing. Has Sorry. they got any easier over the years? Yeah. Or you, is it still exactly the same? <laughs> really? Well, I think so, I think so. Because <clears throat> it's just that, you know, fail to prepare to pre prepare to fail thing, isn't it? Which took me about 20 years to get that down I think, and understand that, you know? I mean, I think the difference is that you know what's coming and you know, and you know that it won't last all night long. It won't last the, the, the whole performance. It'll be something, I sometimes think of it as, as you know, when you, when you were a kid and you used to go to the swimming pool and, you, and there'd be like a, a corridor of showers that you had to walk through. To get to get into the pool, mm. it's a bit like that. Going mm. on stage, you go through this kind of right, this but less shower. chance of getting a veruca. Right, definitely. <laughs> uh, uh, <clears throat> yeah, but the, the, the other thing is when you actually walk out on the stage, it doesn't really matter. You have sluggish. You're feeling that the, there's this energy that just hits you the moment the lights go mm. down, and that will almost always get you through. It will just mm. it will just get you through. At the other end of the show, you've. You've done this, you've, you've performed, it's gone well, and you've got all this adrenaline. What do you do when you go off stage with all that energy that you've kind of hmm, had that's like, a, charging that's up a inside thing. you? <clears throat> yeah, um, it's, it, you had the come down yeah. after a show. I, some, some people can just go straight to bed. Um, some but none people, of them are in our band. <laughs> some people go crazy. Um, we used to go crazy. But uh, I think we've, we've all learned that we, you need to conserve a little bit of, bit of energy. It's a dangerous time if you get it wrong, you know. So I think, I, I don't know about you, John. Yeah. I, t I try to just kind of bring myself down gently yeah, I mean, without got, going you, crazy. You've got to eat something because your yeah. blood sugar's like mm. down. Yeah. So you need to eat something. But, you know, I don't know. I mean, we're lucky. You know, we go back to a nice hotel. You know, I mean, we got Netflix. You know, there's, I mean, there's so yeah. many ways you can call home. It's, it's so much easier now than it was, you know, 
30 years ago or whatever, you know, you feel, and I think that, the, you know, the other thing is, you know, you're so, you get this incredible rush of connection with people. And I think the hardest thing is to let go of that in a way. And yeah. you can, especially if you go back to your hotel <clears throat> room and you're by yourself, yeah. you're like, what just happened? Yeah. What do yeah, I do yeah, with yeah. that? But it's kind of like, it's mm. easier, connection's easier today, isn't it? We're just in a more mm. connected age, I think. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that's not as, uh, that's not as harsh as it used to be. Yeah. You're about to be begin the UK leg of the tour. Do you like playing UK shows? Are the audiences different to say like audiences in the States where you, you did on the last leg? Audiences are interesting. Audiences kind of, they're the same, but they're different. There's certain things about them are always the same. It's, 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 it's very hard to put your finger on it, but then there's, the differences are easy to put your finger on. Um, the, the Italian audience is just very, very vocal and very mm. and noisy and very passionate in that Italian way. Similarly, the um, Argentine audience, they're like that. American audiences are kind of, whoa, they, there's a big roar, isn't there? UK audiences are a bit more like that. Um, I think it, it's very much to do with our f feeling of being at home and playing at home. You know, you want to, you want to turn on the people in your hometown kind of thing or in your home country and for that reason that the UK audience is particularly special for us and you've got people that have been there from the yes. beginning yeah you know we played this we played this outdoor show a Blackpool way last year mm -hmm. do you remember live them live them yeah, Anne. yeah and it felt as though everybody had been to the runner yeah. It felt like everybody there had been <laughs> with us from the very beginning, that they just knew, <coughs> they just Excuse knew me. everything, you know, and that feels really good because that's like a, you know, Friends United, you know, it's like a, it's like a reunion. How hard is it to put together a set list these days? Is it like an act of diplomacy between the band? Or, you yes. or do you tend to be on the same page? <laughs> so you're not, if different people go, lean different ways or? John does a lot of work on the set list. He does, he, he, because you, you have, and I, and I re, and we all re, really appreciate oh, that, thank by you. the way. <laughs> um, because you do. And then, and, and then we, we, we look at it and we all have our yeah. own kind of feelings about it, which we'll voice. Um, you know, and um, and we'll we'll end up with something which we all feel that we've been involved with a little bit, and we all feel happy with. Yeah. Um, there are you know we've got certain there are certain not so much rules but principles. Let's say um, we think we think only thirty percent new music, one third, third. Let's say one third new most. music, two thirds to the rest of it has to be has to be songs that are really going to get people up, bangers. And um, and one third can be like sort of more esoteric album tracks and things. It's quite generous because not all bands would think like that. Well, well, we're entertainers first and foremost. Yeah. I think artists second. And um, we've been to but, we've all been to concerts where yeah. where the artist gets Jeez. up on stage and doesn't play what you want to hear yeah. more than anything. Yeah. And it's such a disappointing feeling. And I, I just never want anybody to walk out of our concerts feeling like that. And if, and if you're an artist and you think that you're, you, you playing your, all of your new album is more important than the, than the crowd um, walking out feeling satisfied, then be it on your head. Yeah. yeah, you know, it's something that we get to do for a living that I think like guys typically love doing is that we look at we look at our collection of songs mm. and we arrange them properly. <laughs> like every show. Oh no, let's move that one over there. Oh no, let's put you know we love to do that with our stuff, right? With our yeah. dens. And we arrange our albums and our books and then we say, Yes, that's who I am. And we kind of we kind of get to do that. You know, it's like, you know, it's like it's like a retrospective but then you know, you're, you're, you're doing constantly and you're refreshing it all the time you know but there's always there's always a different way of looking at it isn't there there's always the way you can have that 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 array in front of you and you can pick out all the ones that are a certain color so to speak yeah. you know pick out all the blue ones and then mix them mix a couple of orange ones in with that and you can you can actually make very very different shows yeah. out of our repertoire yeah are there certain songs that you've learned to experience only work at a certain point in the set? Um, or is it not like that? I don't think so. Um, but there, we, there, there's, there's not, I think we have, it's more like there are certain points in the set which demand certain songs. Okay. Like the opening. You yeah. know, we know how we like to hit the stage. 
um, and there are very specific um, parameters for me as a singer. You know, I can't go on and do the hardest, highest sort of um, pitch song early on in the set because I'm in danger of, of, of making the rest of the show very difficult for myself if I blow my voice out early. But we don't want to go on and play a ballad first number. You yeah. want to get the crowd stirred up. You've been doing Girls on Film as like a kind of medley mashup with Cavern Harris, except mm -hmm. on the 80s. Where did that idea come from? That was Nick's idea. Yeah. It's a fun idea. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I mean, I remember hearing that song for the first time, and, it, and, and I thought, that there's some kind of sea change. I remember thinking, you know, the 80s, it was a long time um, before the 80s kind of got its due culturally. You yeah, know, it yeah. just felt like we were on this endless sort of 70s. We were just constantly, you know, whether it was fashion or music, all kinds of culture, it was just it kept going round and round from hippies to punks to punks to hippies, and then very slowly there were like, these little like things that would happen that were like that gave the 80s a nod to the 80s yeah and i remember yeah. that song coming yeah. out and thinking oh okay that's kind of you know that's kind of cool for us it was over because the 80s was a great time for british music in particular mm. like yeah. it's a real kind of second revival there are massive there are massive fans of the 80s now people who only listen to 80s music we know a lot of them <laughs> <laughs> not, not, we're not, it's not us. <laughs> Adam Lambert just did a cover of uh, Ordinary World, your song. Have you heard it? What do you think of it? I haven't heard I haven't it. Heard. I mean, I, I know Adam. I've met him. He's a, he's a very nice guy, actually. Um, and I know so that why he's... why spoil that friendship? <laughs> yeah. <no. laughs> well, I know he, he, he's a fan. He's a, he's a Duran fan. Um, I, just had, I just haven't heard that. But it doesn't, it doesn't surprise me. It's, he's, he's made it very him, it's very dramatic. Right. right, good, good. And he said it's, he found it really hard to sing. Oh, yeah. He said I it was hard. He placed it on that Queen tour, that'd be interesting. <laughs> Played with Brian and Roger. How do you, like, are there covers of your songs that you've particularly liked over the years? Like, I was, I did a bit of research and saw that, like, William Shatner had covered Planet Earth. <laughs> that, that blew my oh, wow. mind. <laughs> yeah. But he'd kind of, you know, he'd done I, it in his, I his was speaky always way. a big, big fan of the whole cover of Hungry Like the Wolf. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was another one where it was like, oh, hey, you know. That it was is, like yeah. she was the very person you wanted to cover your song that, yeah. that week. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that was amazing, that was yeah. Cool. yeah. Is it weird when artists cover your songs or do you try not to get... No, it's great. It's not weird. It's just great. <laughs> I mean, I, I, you know, I don't care if they're good covers or bad covers, no, to agree. be honest with you. Yeah. People, come, you know, people say, oh, don't you hate that version of this by so-and-so and so-and-so? And I think, no. Why? Why would I hate it? And they go, oh, it's terrible. I said, but I don't, I don't care if it's terrible or good, actually. I think it's, it's great when proof. Do. It's the real proof of the quality of a song in yeah, a way. Yeah, you know, yeah. it's got to be elastic. It's got to be, I mean, if Susan Boyle could do Wild Horses, you yeah. know, it was like, okay, well then, you yeah. know, anything can happen. Yeah. You know, I think you've got to be less precious. I mean, we've still got our version. That's our yeah. version. Yeah. But people can do what they like. It's great. You play a lot of uh, new music on your radio show, Simon, and you uh, were behind Wet Leg from the start. Was it kind of amazing to see them explode this year, like winning the Brit Awards? I was, feels like they've really captured the moment. I was so convinced that they were the real thing, and, and particularly that that record, Chase Long, was something very, very special. So I... And I, and I, I, think, I, I think I was on it quite early. Yeah. Um, and the minute I heard it, I knew, I just knew that it was, it was a hit. Um, and um, so it was, it, it, like I said, it, it does, doesn't surprise me that they were so successful. I'm very, I'm very, I feel kind of slightly vindicated, <laughs> you know? <laughs> what was it about the record that kind of you, made you so convinced that they were the, the um, real thing? Well, the vocal delivery, for starters. That, that, that you, know, we, you know, we live in a time when there's a lot of artists doing spoken word stuff. Um, and to do something that stands out and is, 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 is decent and different is difficult. There are other bands. Dry Cleaning has to be mentioned. You know, Snapped Ankles as well. I think they, they really, they do a great job of this. There, there are lots of them. But that Wet Leg song, and also the guitar. You know, it had an absolutely driving rock guitar and a beat that you couldn't kind of, it pinned you down when you listened to it. So I, th I think, I, I love music like that. Yeah, no, it just feels like they kind of almost came out of nowhere and it was totally fresh. Yeah. And now it, it's everyone else has caught on, which is kind of yeah. amazing. 
What's, what kind of stuff do you like playing on your radio show? Like, what's the kind of criteria? Well, the criteria is I have to really like it. <laughs> me. It's me. It's, yeah. it's, it's, um, it's not in an egotistical way, but I know that the, I, I just make the kind of radio show that I'd like to hear. You know, and I and sometimes I've got old stuff in it, like I put. Um, Why does he point at me? When it's <clears> like, no, 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 <laughs> no. So, I mean, I, I, I like, I like, um, I really enjoy segueing um, in, into things that that contrast very much with each other. Whether it's tempo, whether it's contemporary followed by something old, or something really hard and punky followed by something like folk or something like that. I, I, li- I just like to do that because I think it keeps your ears very fresh. So you really listen to the next song. If it's the same as the one before, you start mm. to get a little bit deaf to it, you yeah. know? Mm-hmm. This is maybe a related question, but like, what's the criteria for an artist you want to collaborate? I mean, on the last um, album you had, oh, on Future Partial, well, apart from being a huge, massive record seller. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, uh, previous album you had uh, Janelle Monáe, Kaiser. Like, who, how, yeah. who, what makes someone someone you want to reach out to and say, do you want to be on a record? Well, usually it's anybody who who accepts us, uh, yeah. <laughs> somebody who will work with us. They all have a different <laughs> story, you know. Janelle was like, we would never <clears throat> have imagined Janelle would be interested. I mean, that was that was literally our, our publisher saying, hey, you know, have you thought about asking Janelle Monáe? Janelle Monáe, right? Yeah. And so that that happened. That way, but equally, it could be somebody, shy, you know, yeah, yeah, you know, who who I'd come across, and we we and Nick said we need to get some Chinese girls on <laughs> this song. I said I don't know any Chinese girls. I can't. I can think of a Japanese all girl punk group though. Mm-hmm. And um, he said, "Oh, let's have a listen." And I and I played him Neo, and he thought that's fantastic. That's exactly what we want. So we approached them, and they said, "Yeah." You know, it's funny. It's like we 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 held out for years, didn't we, against yeah. features, and like we we yeah. were like mainly well, no, me, that, I think. Well, you were probably I didn't want to share because it's always right. it's always the vocal that gets shared, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, we you know we've been doing remixes for years. You've got to let go of your part. Somebody's yeah. going to come in and do a you know do a remake or a remodel. But but I think one of the things about like hey we're a band you know we've got this you know we've got it we've got it covered. That's something that bands do. And uh, so the idea of somebody coming in and like, having a guest spot, but then we kind of, I forget what the first one we did, maybe it was Janelle, I don't know, but suddenly we were like, this is, this is great fun. It was, you know, yeah. it was really fun bring, having people come in, especially towards the end of an of a album project where kind of everybody's a little bit, mm. you know, we're running out of ideas, running out of patience, you know, and you have somebody come in just for an afternoon, really, and it can be really inspiring. Calice was the first one, was I think. It? Calice, Calice on wow. the man who sold the left. Right, right. Yeah, because Mark yeah. Ronson was like, yeah. yeah, I think he was the first producer that he, we worked with that was yeah. like, oh, no, you've got to get, you know, let me call this guy and, yeah. let me, you know, try this. It's, I mean, the industry is so feature-based now. Like everyone collaborates with everyone. It's yeah. never been more of a yeah. feature kind yeah. of climate. I think <laughs> techno and hip-hop that really did that. Yeah. You know, because they're both... Because they're both producer music in a way. I mean, techno is a producer music and they need, you know, singers now and again. And I think with hip hop, they realized that that kind of, you know, style of singing was not in itself, you know, mm. mainstream enough. And I think it was maybe Eminem, you know, that, you know, that, that had that song, you know, Stan. And, and suddenly they were like, hey, but if we have some yeah. singing on this track, <clears throat> yeah. then it becomes, it has the potential to be an enormously mainstream pop song. Metronomy have just done a really good one with Katie Pearson. Have you heard that? It's really worth listening to. I can't remember the name. It's great. Really good. You mentioned Mark Ronson. I mean, you've worked with some of the the most iconic producers now, Rogers, Timberland. What what criteria do you look for in a producer? And can you work with any producer? Or do some people (laughs) help you up the wrong way? I think that's a very interesting question. Um, You know, because there's four of us and everybody has has to have that feeling of a connection with the producer. I think that's number one. We all have to feel good about that person, um, and I think they have to get Duran Duran as well. And 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 Mark Ronson definitely gets Duran Duran. So does Nile Rogers. So does Ben Hudson. So does Errol. 
you know they all really in their own way they get something about us and they have a and they have a vision for what Duran Duran means to them and what they could mean to everybody who gets the next record can you tell quite quickly whether someone gets the band or not is it something like yeah yeah you can tell yeah well when we were working with Timberland we'd been in the studio for about three days and I started playing and he was like oh that's what you do <laughs> <laughs> you know, but yeah. I mean, he would have been—he would have been fine with Simon, really. He didn't really, you know. He I, was used to yeah. building. He was used to building yeah. the track, you know. Yeah. And he—he he didn't really know. I think he liked the idea. There's a couple of times that we've worked with, you know, should we say, electronic-oriented producers, and they don't quite know what to do with a drum kit. You know, okay. they don't quite yeah. know what to do with a guitar. But then there are other. But then there are other like Errol Alkan, you know, who was like really out of the clubs, but like his knowledge of, of music and mm -hmm. sounds it was encyclopedic. The first I mean, record he bought was the 12 inch of the reflex. Well, that too, you know, that, that, that goes down well. <laughs> you, mentioned so Timberland, you mentioned Timberland, but Tim, so Timberland get, came on and as soon as Timberland came on, Justin Timberlake said, yeah. I want to be part of this. That and that really, really helped the, um, the collaboration work. You know, at the mm. time, we were, at a, we were at a quite a low point, weren't we? Or were we? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it was, yeah, we, we, we needed something. We needed, because Andy had just, um, just, we just parted company with Andy. And, um, and we needed something. And, and, and sort of the name Timberland has so much good stuff attached to it. Yeah. We really wanted it. Mm. We really wanted it. And he it. was the game that, that, yeah. at time, that time. I mean, it was, it was kind of a privilege, really. But, uh, you know, yeah, I mean, it's, we're a tough room. Mm. You know, you've really got to be, you've got to bring something special. And like Simon says, you've got to like honor everybody. We're all very yeah. yeah. touchy feely. I mean, Giorgio Moroda was really interesting, you yeah. know, because, because, um, you know, he agreed to come in and do yeah. two songs with us. And we were, we were like right in the middle of having worked with Errol Alcan, which like every day was like food fight. You know, it was like National Lampoon's yes. fucking recording session. We were like throwing things across the studio. It was so loud. And suddenly, and, and then Errol stepped away for a couple of days and Giorgio arrived and came in with his suitcase. <clears throat> and in his little suitcase, he had a keyboard. And, you know, and, we, and it was, it could not have been more different. Yeah. You know, yeah. and we were and like, we had to behave ourselves. Oh, I, I was like, guys, 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 Giorgio's trying to speak. Yeah. You know, yeah. and everybody had to like, Yes, George. And, and, then th and this sort of, and this slightly, it was a, a sort of unspoken agreement, really, wasn't it? That, that seemed to develop. And that was whatever Giorgio says, yeah. Giorgio gets. Just do it. Whatever Just Giorgio do it. wants, Giorgio yeah. gets in terms, of, in terms of our input, our, you know. Yeah. So, because he, he's, I mean, he, he had such a track record and you just wanted. You wanted what he had. Yeah. There was one funny bit that we were doing um, when we were doing, um, oh, well, the one with, um, oh, Beautiful the one lies. with Saffron and I can't. Beautiful Lies. Beautiful Lies. And, um, and I went in and I did the backing vocal and I, and I came out of the, of the, of the studio and Giorgio was going, no, 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 no. <laughs> No, 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 Simon. You're singing a major third over a minor chord. I said, I'm in Duran Duran. I'm Simon Lepont. I've made a career out of singing major thirds over minor chords. And he goes, not on my record. And I was about to go, ah. I thought, no, just hold that and just do what he wants you to do. So I went back and sang it minor. But it goes back to what you said yeah. earlier, like when you have like an artist come in, it's it sounds like it, every producer is going to change the vibe. It just gives a totally different flavour. Yeah, each time. you need it to be honest. I mean, we we can finish each other's sentences, you know. And I think it's like, and we and we get excited about going and working on new material. But but it is nice to have an X factor in the room with you. Yeah. I mean, we have that with guitar players. We don't have a full time guitarist, yeah. so like uh, we had Graham Coxon on this uh, on a Future Past record, and it yeah. was just like, and honestly, we were all trying to, we were all following him. You know, in a way, he was the most interesting player in the room to mm. all of us because mm -hmm. we didn't know what he was going to do. Yeah. Um, and, and, and we also appreciate, oh, that's changing, that's changing me in a way. That's bringing something new out of me. Yeah. Um, How did Graham Coxon come on board? Well, that was Errol, really. Errol and Nick, yeah. I think. And Nick yeah. had met him. Yeah. Nick had so, met him and they, and they seemed to have a meeting of minds. Yes. Yeah. And then we were in the studio and, um, and, and Errol said, who do you want for a guitarist? And Nick went, hmm, you know, Graham Coxon. I 
quite like him. And Errol goes, I, I know him really well. He's my neighbor. So he, so Errol brought him in. It was, it was a, it was a f fabulous, fabulous, serendipitous uh, wow. meeting. You're working on a, a, a new album at the moment, right? Yeah. What can you tell us about that? And who, who've We're you not, got? I can't tell you much about it, actually. It's got to have some covers on it. Is <laughs> yeah, that yeah, there? Yeah. Um, yes. It's, and it's, songs um, that mean something to it's, you. It's a special project. It's, 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 it's um, yeah, it was, it was a, it's a spontaneous project. Well, it's like really. a Halloween theme project is what it is. And it, and it was born out of a show that we did last year um, in Las Vegas, where we just, we just basically did a whole bunch of cover songs and like the more sort of gothy, spooky Duran songs from the catalogue. And we presented in a very particular way that was really a lot of fun. Mm. And um, I think we all went away thinking, mm, maybe there's, you know, there's something in this. Wow. So, you know, that's that was the that was the beginning. Of I wasn't. It. I really had to be talked into it. Yeah, yeah. So it's a Halloween I, themed. Well, <clears throat> no, Hall yeah. Halloween. Yeah, it sent. is. Yeah, that that was the guiding principle for the for the song choices. Yeah, they had they, they had to be have be a bit dark or twisted. Yeah, you know that's cool. Um, and we picked as many Duran Duran tunes as we felt felt fit into that, <clears throat> and then we picked some covers that um, fit into that as well. I mean, it's nice because it's not like I don't think any of us. I mean, we've got touring this year, but none of us are kind of dying to get onto a new album project. It's mm. such a, I mean, it's a three. It, it's it's insane how long the you know how long it takes to from you know we go into the studio day one of a new album project yeah. you know it's a, it's a, <clears throat> it's a it's a it's a big thing you know and i think this was like oh you know this could be kind of fun mm. and it was like not quite like you know but there will be a, you know uh, the plan is for there to be one or two new songs on it as well I, um, mainly because mainly because when we go and do a, a proper full studio new Duran Duran album, nobody goes in with any ideas whatsoever. Yeah. We've, got to, we've got to generate everything from that, from the day we all walk into the room <laughs> together. Uh, that's a good thing. Well, it is. That's one of our guiding principles. <clears throat> I mean, we've always yeah. worked that way. Yeah. I mean, you know, from, from day one, you know, it was like we, had some, we had some grooves. Principles. You know, Simon walks in, we play some grooves and Simon you know, sings, and we've got songs. Yeah. We've never, it's like, we're, we're weird like that. If any, I feel like if anybody actually showed up one day and said, hey guys, I've, I've written a song, we'd be like, yeah. you know, nobody yeah. would be interested. Nobody would be interested because we're all too, we, we, we just love to create too much, yeah. you know. And it's we fun. Yeah. It's really fun. It's the, in fact, it's the, it, it, in a funny sort of way, they, it's, it's the most fun that you have in a creative way. Is this is this finding the real seeds, the and turning them into embryos and turning them into songs? Yeah. It is the most exciting part. Nobody wants to miss out on it. Yeah. yeah. You mentioned Andy earlier. As I understand it, he's played on yeah. some songs on this record. Yeah, he's played on a lot actually. What made it the right time for him to to um, contribute? Again? You know, he's not well. He's got cancer. Mm. Um, <clears throat> we would we needed to have guitarist. We need to have guitar on this record. Some of the songs we're doing are songs that Andy played on originally. And I think we all said, come on, let's just, let's just get Andy on them. I went over there with um, Josh Blair. Andy's in a very good place. And, um, and we're, you know, working, he's incredibly creative. He's an incredibly, incredibly creative guitarist. And it's turning out really well. Oh, that's amazing to yeah. hear. Was it very like easy when you started working together again? Did it feel just like before? It was just straight into it. Huh. There was no no prelims. We became the kind of friends and and working partners who you just it just doesn't fall apart ever, you know. So whenever when whenever I know from speaking from for myself, if whenever I, I go into a room and Andy's there, I'm. I can get on with him just like I always have done. Having said that, there are times when me and him were like that, you know, but, but we can do that and we can still, and we can still make music together. Um, and, and, that, and that's the thing, we love music. And so music is the king in that room. And it doesn't matter what, um, e ego has to take a second place. Mm. Do you feel uh, any different as a band since you were inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall, Hall of Fame? Or do you try not to kind of let that 
weigh on you too much because it's an amazing endorsement. Heavy, I know, I know you. <laughs> yeah. I know what you mean. Um, I don't. I. I. You know, it doesn't. We're not. We're not any different. We're the yeah. same people. It doesn't. It hasn't changed our our values. It hasn't changed us with each other at all. Um, but it has. Sort of, it's it's made people in America take us more seriously. That's for sure. What well, really? You've already you noticed the difference. Absolutely. Huh? Yeah, and, I, and 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 in in a funny sort of way, that pisses me off. I That's think you know. I sort of think, well, what, yeah. we should, we should have been taken seriously like this before. Why do you need? Why do you need to have a, a badge that uh, that says that this organisation thinks that you're uh, yeah, cool? Yeah, yeah, but before everybody else gets it. But but it's it's the way it is. Yeah, I mean, people thought it was cool that we played in front of the, the Buckingham Palace in the yeah. summer. Do you know? Play do playback for three yeah. songs. You know, it's like, but. I, I don't know. I, I I had a feeling about a month after we, where you were singing. Like, I was. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> you know, about three weeks after the Hall of Fame, I had like a little feeling of like, hmm, what now? Yeah. Kind of thing. Just yeah. like a little bit. That's what. That's almost why those laurels are quite, they're quite, they can be tricky. You almost don't want them because you want to keep you that drive. You want to have things to, to aim for. Yeah. And I mean, that drive that gets you, yeah. gets you out, gets you to the studio, gets you thinking about this, gets you, you know, it's almost like it, it, it's born out of like an insecurity, really. You can't afford to get yeah, too secure yeah. or you'll just stop. You just will, yeah. you know. And so there's got to be this edge and God knows what it is or where it's come from. And maybe it was installed by the parents. Who knows? But we all we all have it. We get, you know, we, we tour. We feel really fucking good about ourselves. And then, you know, and then we take a break and then we start. And, you know, then the itch comes and it's like, oh, ooh, ooh, I think we but need I to But I think that. That, comes, that comes from... That, that comes from a couple of things. One of them is the, this desire to be part of what's happening now and to be part of new music. Even if you're a bunch of old fuckers making new music, mm. we're still making new music. And that puts us into a, a, a yeah. different kind of wallpaper Yeah. to people who just carry on playing the same old songs yeah. that they played many, many years ago. Yeah. But also... Because I think we know in our hearts that there's no accolade, no no prize, no club, no award that is more important than making a new, re yeah. new a new piece of music. It's true. Nothing is more important than that. It's that's the real prize is the music you make. Something I was surprised about when I was uh, prepping for the interview is that you've never done Glastonbury. Is it very mm. much on the wish list? Is that something you really? Do want to I'd it. love to. I'd love to. We just need to have to get the right slot. That's all. Well, what what slot would you want? Um, I, I don't want to. I don't want to say <laughs> right here, right now. It's just sort of something we're. I, I'm sure in negotiation with, and if we're not, we will be. So it's definitely just want to get in the pipeline. Slot. Let's say. Yeah, we have had the chance to do it before, but it wasn't. It wasn't playing the main stage, and I think we'd like to be doing that for sure. No, that's fair enough. <clears throat> I just ask. I'll end on a slightly cheesy question, but when people hear the name. Duran Duran, what do you want to kind of pop into their head? Fun. Hmm. Good time. Something that hits you in the heart a little bit. That's a nice answer. Well, yeah, thanks so much for your time. Thank you. It's been Thank really you. interesting. Thank you.